Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I'm making a tutorial today about Pixelmator Pro. I've done a couple of videos about it. You can find them there. And I'm having fun with it. It's really a powerful app. It's really amazing. Um, the only question I have for myself about this app is, why didn't I get it sooner? I mean, it's fun. It's cool. Um, I'm having a great time with it. What I wanted to do today is show how you can quickly and easily replace or swap out a background in a photo. The, uh, the product does have layers and it has intelligent masking, in including a quick selection uh, brush, which is what we're gonna use today. Um, and it's fun and it's easy. So I'm gonna get started. I've got a sunset sky, and the first thing I'm gonna do is drag that into Pixelmator Pro and drop that in there. And there's my sky. Now the layers panel is over here on the left. If you have this little drop down menu, you can hide it if you want to. I'm gonna just go ahead and show it as a list, as I did there. Now, I recommend if you're doing this that you put the new background on the bottom. So that's gonna be your background layer. And then you can click on that plus sign and choose. And I'm gonna go get this building and drop it in on top. Now you see the photos are different sizes. So there's a tool over here called Arrange and you just click on that and that will allow you to basically drag this photo and expand it so that it fits more accurately inside this one. You can also then reposition if you want to get that building kind of in the center, which I do and I did and I'm done. So um, here's where the quick selection comes in. You come down here on the right hand side and there's this little tool here called quick selection. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, it's just a little brush icon thing. Click on that and click on new. And what I would do here is, as you can see, as I hover over different pieces of the photo, the uh, quick selection is trying to select whatever it is I'm hovering over. Now, I'm not clicking there, I'm just hovering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the size of my brush because I wanna cover a large uh, bit of ground. And what I recommend doing is brushing uh, over the stuff that you wanna keep, right? So you can see as I'm doing this pretty quickly, kinda of going over this, it is intelligently figuring out where the edges are, it's getting that sculpture, it's doing all these things. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, let's say um, I miss a section. I'm gonna do that on purpose. So there we go, I missed that whole section. Oh, by the way, I missed those people up there too. No problem, I just click on add. And then I come over here and I can add this section and that adjusts the mask. And then I can add this guy and that adjusts the mask and I can add this guy. Now, I wanna get his cane as well. You can see that's kind of highlighted and there you go. I've got it done. It was that easy to just get the mask in place. Then I recommend clicking invert and then hit the delete key and it's gone. Um, I'm gonna click deselect so you can uh, not see the mask or those marching ants, whatever you wanna call them. And it's literally that easy. That only took me a few seconds. Now I do wanna point out, you can see around the edges like this cane where there's some of that um, other blue sky uh, kind of bleeding in, for lack of a better word. So you do have to be careful in some areas, those smaller ones like that, and be very specific. And I recommend, as I did here, is changing the size of your uh, brush with your bracket key. The right bracket key makes it larger and the left bracket key will make it smaller. But it's very powerful, very quick, very easy. And to be clear, that sky doesn't necessarily go with this image. I just wanted to show you that that's one example of how you can use layers and the quick selection tool to quickly change out the background. Again, that one doesn't really go together, so I'm gonna click uh, delete and just change that. Uh, but what I wanna do now is I've got this other background and I'm gonna do this with a portrait. So I'm gonna stick that on there, there you go, and same idea. I'm gonna click choose and I'm gonna grab this uh, this portrait that I got from Unsplash. So again, that photo is bigger than the texture. So I'm gonna go up here to the, the transform or range tool and you just kinda of, kind of move this around until you can uh, find those edges and then just shrink it down to where it basically fits on your image. And I'm gonna do something about like that. Now, once again, I'm going to the quick selection tool and I'm gonna click new and my brush is a fine size, so I'm just gonna highlight over this young lady and uh, hover where I feel like I need to hover, and then um, we're gonna clean it up in a second. There you go. So there's the quick selection tool, but you can see I've got some spots over here where I need to fix that. So I'm gonna click on add, and once again, I'm gonna shrink my brush. Oh, sorry, no, it's subtract in this case. It's already been added. I need to subtract that. In other words, I'm gonna get the mask um, off of there or whatever. So. There you go, subtract, 
and subtract up in there. There's a tiny little dot there. There's a tiny little dot there. And there's a couple tiny little dots right in there. It's also some stuff up here. So I'm going to do that. And um, I think there's a tiny little spot in here. I'm going to shrink my mouse as small as it can go and try to get in there. And that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but I'm also going to come over here and get that. And this little uh, bit of uh, that leaf head thing that she's wearing uh, seems to be hanging out behind her ear. I don't want that as uh, either. So there we go. That's all selected. I think it looks great. I'm going to hit invert and then once again hit delete. And there you go. Uh, now you can see some of that has bled through. So I'm going to undo the uh, selection and the inversion. And I'm going to come back over here and clean this up a little bit. And there we go. Something about like that. And I think now it looks perfect. So once again, I'm going to hit invert and then hit delete. And there we go. Uh, let me hit deselect. And you can see that in my opinion, she's perfectly in there. I mean, that looks fantastic. I've got all the yellow stuff out, including what was bleeding through, like between these leaves that you see over here. You can also then use this transform tool to increase the size of that. If you want to increase or decrease it, just be careful. You see here, these photos are different sizes. So if they're not the same size, you might want to resize them uh, so that they're perfectly aligned so that when you do that kind of rearranging, you don't end up with extra stuff that you need to get rid of. But that's how that works. Here's another cool thing you can do. I can go back to the quick selection tool and I'm going to click new quick selection and I'm going to increase my brush a little bit. And what I want to do is play with these flowers a little bit. And that is, I want to change the color. So I'm going to select all this red flower. And you do that by just moving your mouse, kind of hovering. And I've got kind of a small mouse, so it takes a little bit longer when the mouse is smaller. But I'm coming in here and trying to select all of that. There we go. And here, I've selected that. Now I'm going to go to the Adjustments pane, which is over here. It's called Color Adjustments. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go into Hue and Saturation, and I'm just going to drag this. And as I change the hue, you can see as I'm rolling the hue, it's basically changing the color of those flowers. And I wanted to make them purple. And there we go. I've just selected those flowers after selecting her and putting her in a new background. I've now changed the color of those flowers as well. I can hit deselect and there you go. That's a new background and a new color on the flowers, all quick and easy, just selected super uh, accurately, uh, I might say, with this quick selection tool, which is super intelligent, clearly edge aware, really powerful. Like I said, I just don't know why I didn't have this uh, product years ago. I've never really been a fan of Photoshop and Honestly, with everything that you can do in Pixelmator, I don't know why, if you have a Mac, why you would have Photoshop. I can't really think of something that you could do in Photoshop that you can't do here. Now, I'm not a Photoshop expert at all, not even close. I'm also not an expert in Pixelmator Pro. So uh, it's still kind of new to me, but I'm finding so much I can do that I'm just wondering, I'm like, golly, what would I use Photoshop for? So anyway, that's how you can quickly and easily replace a background in Pixelmator Pro, as well as make some adjustments to it further if you would like to. It's powerful, it's fun, it's easy. I'm just gonna go do more of it. I'm just having fun with it. So hope that helps. Hope it gives you some ideas about how this tool works. I'm continuing to e explore the layers and the brush masking and all that because they got all these brush tools and lots of capability over here. There's really a lot to dive into and unpack. I'm going to keep going through that, but I've been kind of playing around with layers because I've had a few people say, hey, can you help me with layers and masking? And while this doesn't cover all of it, this is an idea of what you can do, but I'll be back with more. Let me know if there's certain things you'd like me to try to explore as I continue checking out this amazing and fun product. Pixelmator Pro, that's how I do it today, my friends. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those things. Have fun editing. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and adios.